You're listening to The Hello Well with Danielle Show, a podcast taking women of color on a journey exploring all things wellness and travel related. We're all about showing you how to put on your oxygen mask first and creating lasting self-care habits that will free you to travel the world and live the life you truly desire and not one you have to fake loving. I'm your host, Danielle Washington. Now let's buckle up and start this journey. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. I am your host, Danielle Washington, and we are talking everything about sex today. I feel like it's like that salt and pepper song. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me, but actually we're just talking about you. Like often when we think about sex, we think about, you know, just being with a partner and pleasing them or them pleasing us. And I just want to focus simply on the pleasure of ourselves because as women, we always are giving to other people and we come last. And I want our pleasure, especially our sexual pleasure, not to be something that lasts on our priority list. And so that's why I brought in Chanel Jolly of the Jolly Company who is an amazing sex educator who focuses on sexual pleasure, education, and research, and is just a wealth of information. Little did you know, you can get a lot of sexual things. You don't need to buy a $100 sex toy. You can go to the Dollar Tree. And she explains all of that in this episode. So don't miss out on anything. And I'm just, I'm grateful for her. And I got some major tips as well. So bet, let's get this party started. Hello, Chanel. Welcome to the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. How are you this morning? Hi, thank you so much for having me. Girl, I am so happy to have you because this topic is so important. I, and I just want to dive right into it because we have so much to cover. My first question to you, because I'm a little salty about this. Why is it in sex ed we are not taught about pleasure whatsoever? <sighs> That's what stresses me out a whole Exactly. Lot. A whole lot. And I was, uh, I presented at a conference last night and I was just talking about this, how we can include pleasure in sex ed for all ages and have it age appropriate, basically. Because when we have a foundation where sex is scary or it's going to get you in trouble or all these negative connotations are placed upon it, then that's your foundation for your sexual self, right? Yeah. And so you're going to forever be like looking up, looking over your shoulder per se around um, how you think about sex, mm-hmm. how you behave towards sex and all of that. So that's why um, in my company, I specifically talk about pleasure-based, inclusive medically accurate sex education, because I think that pleasure-based part is super important. And I do agree with it. It's important because I feel like, you know, how did I learn about sex? It sure wasn't in sex ed. Sex ed was just like, okay, but I, my parents had this book called The Joy of Sex that they had in their bookshelf. And I was a curious child. I was done with the encyclopedias. I was like, mm, what's this? I was like, okay. I have that on my <laughs> shelf over there. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and I, I read that at a pretty young age, even though I didn't have an exact clue what I was reading. But I will also say that even kind of reading that and whatever, I still didn't understand. Like my first sexual experience, consent sexual experience was like me just lying there and like, okay, great. He's done. Mm. And is this supposed to be it and whatever? And it wasn't until I started learning how to touch myself that I started to explore more and feeling more pleasure. Like, so how do women allow themselves to experience sexual pleasure? Because like, I feel like there's that, and let me even backtrack it even further. What are barriers to our sexual freedom? Freedom. Oh my gosh, where do I start? So I think one, there's this historical piece that I just can't let go of. Yeah. And there's this like trickle down effect that I speak about in my research. And so I tell people to give their mamas, aunties, whoever raised you, give them a break because they didn't give you information. It might be because they weren't given the information either. And so there's this, uh, you know, we can only teach what we know, basically. And then unless we're intentional about 
changing that narrative or doing something different, then it's just going to be, well, these are my experiences or what I heard most often is, you know, people just were told, don't bring home no babies. Okay, how do I do that? You know, like, (laughs) how how, how are you breaking this down for me? So, um, am I frozen? You are, you? but we'll see, you are frozen. We'll see if this just keeps working. Yeah, yeah I see there it. I am. Okay, Here's I was it. like, ooh. Okay. Um, but yeah, I I think that's part of it. Is just even the education piece is a barrier because people don't even have that to work off of. And then on top of that, for women specifically, there are quote unquote certain ways we're supposed to behave, right? So right. the whole like. Just lying there for your first experience happens a lot because one, we're taught that, you know, and I'm speaking in heteronormatively, you know, if you are with a man, they're supposed to take over and they should know what to do. And you just are there existing question mark. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? So I think that's a barrier. And then there's a lot of shame around feeling sexual in general. And so no matter who you want to feel sexual with, there's still all of the shame around it. And so, I mean, there's a lot of levels and layers and barriers to that. And I hope that people in general can become more empowered to know what they like themselves. Um, Because this earlier this week, I was talking to some college um, women and I was like, listen to me real good. <laughs> I said, I'm gonna be, a, I'm gonna have an auntie moment with you. And I said, do not place your pleasure in someone else's hands. I and know I was like, that's I know right. y'all are like 21 or 20 or however old you are, but let me tell you something. I lived a little bit longer, look just a little bit, and I'm gonna tell you, do not place your pleasure in someone else's hands you need to know what you like now is there space for exploration with someone else absolutely i'm talking about when we are in sexual spaces or scenarios where we just just existing and you're just there right Mm -hmm. so i think that's super important to be empowered to know what you like yourself so you can tell somebody else so how does someone get over that shame to even to begin the exploration to know what you like? I think it's about meeting yourself where you're at. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times we have this very specific idea of like what sexy is and and what it means to be sexually liberated. That can mean different things for different people. And yeah. so... You know what I mean? And so I think that we need to take it on an individual level, meet yourself where you're at. So if you want to just, you know, try something a little different that's out of your norm, there you go. You start there. Don't think that you have to be all the way (laughs) in the dungeon here. (laughs) Right. You ain't got to be in the dungeon. You don't have to bust out the leather. You don't have to do anything like that, you know? (laughs) Unless you want to. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Unless you want to. I think I'm frozen again. I'm not really sure. Can you still hear me? I can still hear you clearly. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Hopefully I will unfreeze. But um, yeah, so I do think that it's important to give yourself grace in this process because I do think more and more people are awakening to the fact that it's okay to be a sexual being. It's okay to be churchy and sexual. It's okay to be, you know, nerdy and sexual. Like there's, it's okay to be human. It's okay to be a sexual person. And that could look one zillion different ways. And so I think it's important to think about that. Like it can look however you want it to be for you because it's your sexuality. And I agree with that because I think part of me, you know, not part of me, all of me looks at wellness the same way. I look at wellness as, you know, and I was talking about it being a custom pair of jeans. 
it's, you know, made to fit mm-hmm. you. Like what, you know, Becky is doing on in, on Instagram may not be the same thing that means wellness to you or sexual pleasure to you. Um, and I love that you talk about empowering yourself and trying things that may work for you and you don't have to go all the way to the dungeon. I just feel like sometimes if there's that stigmatism that's been so deep rooted that people are like, well, I don't even know where to begin. Like, do I just try touching myself? Do I try, you know, like different, adding different sexual things into my daily day practice. And I think that's where a lot of women are like, where do I just start? I don't know if there's there's like even like activities that you could recommend to like, just, just to start. I think one thing that's been really helpful and something that I am a big proponent of is Thinking about pleasure on a broader basis. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is pleasure doesn't always have to be directly sexual. And so I think if we start looking at pleasure in how we can include it or where it already exists in our lives in general, Mm -hmm. then we can be more grateful and see how we can loop that into our sexual lives specifically. So... If people need to know like where to start, I say start with your senses. Whatever senses you have, um, find something that is pleasurable within that sense. So I always give the example of with taste. I love uh, peanut, what is it? Um, chocolate peanut butter cup gelato from Talenti. Okay. That gives me a lot of pleasure. And it has nothing to do with sex. Now, can I include some gelato in sex? Absolutely. We can figure that out. <laughs> I love it. I'm but... going to talk to you about that later. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was like, put a pin in that. But, <laughs> but yeah, just to think about like, I'm obsessed with music. So even music is pleasurable in general. And then if I want to feel particularly sexy or sensual, I have playlists for that. You know, I know what artists to play if I'm trying to fill away. You know what I mean? So yes. I think it, you know, what I, yeah. So there is a way to do that that doesn't feel so scary. So that's why I say take small bites, you know, small steps, whatever you need. And pleasure is already there. You just have to realize how it shows up for you and how you can kind of loop that more into your sexual self specifically. And I think you bring up a good point that a lot of people aren't thinking about is that a lot of us aren't, don't know what pleasures us outside of sex. So when you don't know what pleasures you outside of sex, you ain't going to know during sex. And so th- they're all connected together. And so I, mm-hmm. I think that kind of the ideal of even starting outside of the bedroom is an area that most of us probably do need to think about. Um, on another note, you know I'm about to ask you what is on this sexy playlist. Because um, I'm like, a girl needs to know. Like, I'm like, I need to know what are her songs. Like, I have been making playlists. Well, I was making tapes back in this slow jam tapes back and I'm totally dating myself. And I used to sell these bad boys and I used to make them pretty good. Yeah. Um, so I was like, cause, you know, I love my little, you know, baby making music. I don't know. And I'm not even trying to make a baby <laughs> um, by any means necessary, but there's something about <laughs> making these tapes that I love. So mm-hmm. I need to know at least three songs that are on your playlist. Absolutely. Um, it's funny you mentioned that because I used to, I wasn't even having sex when I was doing this, but people <laughs> knew that I had like, a knack for like putting together playlists and like setting a like a story and so in college this is when we were burning cds now i'm also dating myself you had to burn the <laughs> cd and you had to like yes. pull it from whatever whatever le- illegal source you didn't pull it from and then put it up <laughs> right lime wire and whatnot yes and so <laughs> And I would, yeah, make these burn CDs for people. They're like, I got a date or, you know, I got something going on. I said, okay, how are you trying to feel? I mean, it was a whole consultation process. It was so serious. But anyway, uh, <laughs> um, now we have streaming. So that has yes. eased that uh, burden. But I cannot go wrong. I am Janet Jackson's number one fan, hands down. Don't at me. Don't debate me. You will not win. 
So okay. I'm telling you, <laughs> okay, some some good Janet from like either like the Velvet Rope album. I mean, she's got so many, but um, Would You Mind is a really really great one. Um, what else do I like? Something more modern. There's this artist called Sir that kept like popping up on my um like Spotify playlist. I, I guess the algorithm figured out yeah. like. Let's let's introduce her uh, to this person. I think she's gonna like uh, this person. I'm like, okay, yeah. So, sir, um, what else do I like? Um, gosh, there's just so many things. Yeah, there are like, some. So we're gonna make sure we get some from her, <laughs> and we're gonna put it in the comments in the show notes because we need to absolutely. know what is your playlist on your playlist so we can get our sexy on because I do feel. Again, for me, for someone who likes to move, dancing and music is a great way for me to feel sensual, but also just touching. Like I remember reading somewhere, like even when you're doing like the dishes, you know, add a sensuality to that. It's like how you're like feeling the warmth of the water and it, how it's, you know, touching your hands and all it's, it's finding different ways of doing basic things to add a sensuality to it, but also beginning with what gives you pleasure in general. Um, mm-hmm. But that being said, as someone who I have, you know, I was molested as a child and I know many women who do have, you know, sexual trauma, like how does that play into um, the feeling of pleasure and how kind of, how do you move past the sexual trauma to even get to the pleasure aspect of it all? Yeah, I think... I have spoken to a lot of women who have had some sort of trauma um, throughout their lives, whether they were children or as adults. And it's tough. I'm not going to even lie. It's tough because a lot of people, especially if you're younger, you will connect um, any kind of sexual act or, you know, that feeling. With, you know what I mean? Like it's a, yeah. it, you're automatically connecting those things negatively. And so now you're having to go back and unlearn and rework and redirect that thought process. So as a therapist, I'm always going to suggest that people reach out to somebody professional who can help you unpack that and pull those pieces out. But something that you can do on your own is to one, remind yourself that it is not your fault. Mm-hmm. It has not, that is not on you. And I think that's a big hurdle, honestly. It's a big hurdle um, to realize nothing you said, did, anything is not your fault. So I think that is really, really important. And I think that helps, that helps you kind of start to reframe things because you see people in some instances who um, were abused or had some kind of assault and now they're starting to change how they show up in the world because they think they did something that caused that to happen. You know what I mean? And so I think it's, it's about reminding yourself and even if you literally have to put it up on your wall or literally have to you know have some kind of app reminder that pops up on your phone and reminds you or even affirms you even you know let's sometimes I like to use positive language just as a reminder like you are enough or you know it's a great day to be a wonderful human being or whatever you want to say but Mm -hmm. just Constant reminders, constant reminders. Um, if you are able to access therapy, because um, I know it's not accessible for everybody, that is helpful. Um, locally, um, I've been involved in some like group therapy. I think that's always healing. Um, if you're able to participate in some kind of group effort, because you know those people will understand where you're coming from. I think that's another piece of it is that you feel alone. And you feel like nobody else will understand your plight or what you have gone through. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of people, unfortunately, who do understand. And so I think it's helpful to know that you are not alone as well. Um, 
So I think just being gentle with, your, with yourself is super, super important. Um, if you do not feel sexy that day, do not force it. You know what I mean? But find ways. And this is why I talk about pleasure that is not connected to sex as well, because you still deserve pleasure, even if it's not sexual. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really important for me. You will hear me say this. This is a hill I will die on. (laughs) That, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, you deserve pleasure in all forms the way you want it. So if you want it to be sexual, great. If not, it's still there for you to access. I love that. So in my kind of research and getting prepared for this conversation, I came across something I had never heard of. And so I want to see if you know about this because I was just like, hmm, what is this? So I was reading about a sexological bodywork practitioner. Mm. Do you know anything about Mm -hmm. that? And what's up? (laughs) Yeah, because I want to. Yeah. I have some colleagues and friends who are sexological body workers and it's not my niche and I I haven't studied it, but I've been someone's like practice person and things like that. And I've read some about it. And so there's something called um, conscious erotic touch. Okay. That I find quite interesting. Um. And that's just one, that's just one like lane, but it's a way to, it's a massage, but it's also like got that extra level in, of intentionality to it. Is it like, like a happy ending massage? Like, um, hmm, not necessarily. I mean, <laughs> not necessarily. It's supposed to just. It can be, I will say okay. it can. Because there's like yoni massages and and lingam massages, but it's supposed to be about being in tune and it's supposed to about be um, like breathing and just being really, really in the moment. Now, bodies are bodies and they're going to react how they're going to react. So, you know, (laughs) it is what it is. That might be part of it. It is what it is on that. And so that's something that you can talk, you know, with your practitioner to like, because maybe they offer that service. I don't know. So, it, it could be that. But there's also um, people who are professional cuddlers. I know a quite... Um, a professional yeah, cuddler? They, I'm like, I need one of those for the winter. <laughs> exactly. And so I think we miss out on the importance of touch. I think that, you know, in our society, in the United States specifically, it's always go, go, go. I'm doing my own thing. I'm hustling. Woo, 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 woo. But when do you slow down? When do you get to be vulnerable? Because you always a boss and a hustler and a, you know, on, on top. Like, when do you rest? When do you relax? When does somebody else get to make a decision for you? Uh, when do you just get to be a little spoon? Yeah, I think everybody deserves to be a little spoon, right? And so prof- professional cuddlers um, just provide that comfort that people need, you know? And it's literally like, a lot of times it's just not talking. It's literally somebody comforting you. You get to be a little spoon or however you decide to cuddle. And that's it, you know? And so I think there's something powerful. And there's also cuddle parties where people can, you know, be together in a big room or whatever. Um, But yeah, that's a thing. And I think it's something to be looked into. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us are touch deprived and we don't realize it until we realize it. And so it's something to be looked into. So those are two examples of um, uh, body working and, you know, a different kind of way of thinking about connection. Yeah, because I hadn't heard of it. And being in San Francisco, I was like, I know that I know that I know that there hella has to be a sexological bodywork person here. Because if there's anyone in anywhere in the, in the country, it's got to be here. So I was like, I am going to be looking <laughs> this up. But I never thought about cuddling. But at the same time, if you think about it, we've been in COVID. Most of us have not been touched because I'm like, I don't know you like that. Um, and that for me, dating, especially right now, is like, I don't know you like that. 
you can say you're vaccinated, Mm -hmm. air quote, but are you really vaccinated? (laughs) Any of you are vaccinated. You might have been with Becky who wasn't vaccinated. I don't know why I always use the word Becky as my example. Becky is always the person. (laughs) You could have been with Joanne, which still sounds white, but whatever. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and she was not vaccinated. So I'm just like, so I, and I'm someone who is a hugger. Like my Bernie man name is Hug Her. Um, H-U-G-H-E-R. Aww. Like hug her. Um, so I love yeah. to hug, but I feel like I have been touch deprived and I miss that. I think I miss that more than actually just being penetrate. I mean, like, I love sex, don't get it twisted, but I think I missed the yeah. touch and I didn't even think about that till you were talking about that. And one of the things I also yeah. wanted to bring up is that I feel like one of the blocks I see, like, even, and I'm, I am guess just talk about myself, when I, there's no one else here. There's just me, it's me, my bed, my toys. And mm-hmm. I feel like one of the blocks I have to pleasure is getting out of my own head. Like, do you have any Sorry, my dog on... is bullying me. <laughs> I'm oh. so sorry. That's why my hand keeps going up. She keeps nudging my hand. I'm trying not to drop coffee. I need I'm a being dog. bullied. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Um, but like, so even when there's no one else and you're by yourself, like, how does one get out of their head? Like, I get like, I'm like, I'm close. And then I like, ah, oh, man, I got to do this thing for the podcast. And my mom needs something or parents need something. And I'm like, and we've missed the moment. I'm like, and I can't. I can like, this is over. Like, how do you get right. out of your head and fully drop into your it's body? So, yeah, it's so difficult to do that sometimes. Like, people see me a lot of times as like super peaceful and like, oh, she must meditate and burn incense and do all this stuff. And I'm like, the incense part, yes, but I'm the worst meditator ever. Because my brain is always thinking about eight different things at a time and it can be really, really difficult to slow down. And yeah. so sometimes I think it's about being really, really intentional about what you're going to do. And so for me, sometimes it's about leaving my phone in another room because my phone's always buzzing about something. Yeah. Something is happening on my phone all the time. And so like physically leaving it, I feel different because I'm like, it's not right here. Like I'm in my bedroom, it's not in here. Okay. So then what else am I going to do? You know what I mean? So it's just like, yeah, oh, yeah, okay, definitely. that's one distraction out of the way. So I think it takes practice because as someone who has tried like traditional meditation, nah. <laughs> it ain't gonna work. <laughs> and so for me, one of my favorite ways to meditate and to be like in the moment is daydreaming. Yeah. I love daydreaming. Um, whether I'm recalling some fun time I had, wink wink, or <laughs> making up a whole new scenario, or just thinking about like I'd rather be at the beach, so I'm just, like, thinking about my favorite beach and, you know, just really transporting myself there so I can hear the waves, I can feel the sun, you know. I might even fix a drink that is tropical so I can, like, make it as real as possible. Knowing my behind is in D.C. and not anywhere near a beach, but I can... (laughs) But there's not a petite, but petite, 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 you know, in Anacostia. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Child, not here. Not here. I like DC, but no. <laughs> yeah, I live there. I feel you. <laughs> yeah. So I think for me is I have to like work really hard at it, honestly. As somebody who teaches about pleasure, and I have to even work really hard at it because I'm so busy. I work, I'm in school, like, you know, there's a lot going on. So I do have to carve out those moments to just pause. Even if it's five minutes, you know, or if it's at the end of the night or something, I I have to give, you have to give yourself rest. You have to. Yeah. No, and I love that. And it, and it made me think of like, 
the reason why I do have certain playlists, like I have playlists from like older relationships. And sometimes I do listen to them because I'm like, oh, you remember that time when you were in the bedroom and blank happened and blank happened and it was to this exact song. I'm like, and action. <laughs> and yep. that really does sometimes help. <laughs> so that's why for music mm-hmm. definitely goes back to memories. And I think that also kind of helps like even like one of the, my partners who I was with for off and on for 11 years, like mm-hmm. I feel grateful for that relationship, not because it was a great relationship, but because I think we both allowed ourselves to sexually explore. But like our first song mm-hmm. together is Janet Jackson, I Get So Lonely. Or no, it was Anytime, excuse me. And so when every time I hear that mm-hmm. song, I'm like, I'm transported to his bedroom in his parents' mm-hmm. house. <laughs> and it's just like on and popping. And it's that memory of yes. this is when I began my sexual exploration. And so I, um, yeah, I think music's great. I think also being in San Francisco, one of the things I'm also really fortunate about is that we have um, female oriented sex shops, like, you know, shout out to Good Vibrations in San Francisco. Like, I remember when I first started exploring and going to a regular sex shop and I'm like, this seems like there's going to be some guy who walks out in a trench coat. And I'm like, just it just <laughs> felt so nasty and so like unclean. And there was this curtain and whatever. But like when I went into like Good Vibrations and, you know, female oriented sex shops, it was like beautiful. They were helpful. They were, you know, here, you know, all the different toys you can touch and you can play and ask questions. And like, I don't feel like everyone has that. Like, so if you don't have that, how do you even begin to like pick a toy or where do you find those type of places? So what's funny is that um, literally yesterday... I posted a reel on Instagram. Um, so this month is Kink Awareness Month. Ooh. And so I, yeah, so I know there's a lot of people who either aren't fully aware of what kink is or don't realize that they already participate in kink in some kind of way already. Um, mm-hmm. because I think we automatically go to the, what the dungeon and the leather and the, you know, all of that stuff. And so I did a reel about, um, how you can, uh, use things from the Dollar Tree, like literally the store, the Dollar Tree to, um, have like introduction to kink. So I tell people if you're interested in like new sensations and like learning more and just playing with that, you don't have to come out of your pocket a whole lot. You can run to the Dollar Tree (laughs) and you know, there are fed, there are feathers there. There are spatulas there. If you want some like impact play, there's, you know, there's things like you don't have to come out of your pocket too much. But the good thing is that there are a lot of resources around sex toys. And I mean, I can name some people off the top of my head who either recommend toys or they have their own shop. And it's, There is a, there is a toy, there is an intro for everybody. So don't think you have to get something that spins and jumps and, uh, leaps off the wall or anything like that. USB controls. That's where you want to (laughs) go. Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) There's literally something for every level, every interest and all that stuff. So I think what's interesting is that using toys is just like, an extra oomph. It doesn't replace anything. It doesn't, you know, it can be incorporated into. And so like you can use it with partners. It doesn't have to be the thing that you use when you aren't partnered or, you know, if you weren't satisfied with the session, then you finish (laughs) with your own toys or whatever. But yeah, I, I do think there's something for everybody. Um, that is at your level, whatever that is. And then you can build upon that or you can try it and hate it, but at least you've tried it. And so I tell people just, you know, just try it and just kind of figure out what you might like and, and things like that. But you don't know unless you try. I'm like, says to myself, hmm, 
must go to the Dollar Tree to see what is actually at the Dollar Tree. Um, I'm like, oh, yes. good to know. <laughs> While I'm picking up my little white candles, I'm like, let's see what else. <laughs> I, like, I did think about when you were talking about it, I was like, a spatula was the first thing that came to mind. I was like, what else could be at a Dollar Tree? I'm like, must look into this. So I love it. I love it. I yeah. love it. I think you gave so much good information um, on so many different ways about how to, you know, just kind of start exploring and that pleasure isn't just about sex and, you know, just to be free. And I, I love you for this. Um, how can people connect yeah. with you? Like, I know you're doing a lot of great things out there. Absolutely. Um, I'm on social media. Um, you can find me at Jolly Co. It's J-A-A-L-I underscore C-O. And that is on um, Twitter and Instagram. On Facebook, I'm there at Jolly Co. Um, I'm on TikTok sometimes. And you can find me there at Chanel Jolly. Um, but also you can, of course, find me at my website, www.jollyco.com. Fantabulous. So I love to ask everyone some quick fire questions at the end of the show. So nothing major. So sure. just whatever comes to mind, answer the first thing that comes to mind. So my first question to you is what does living hella well mean to you? I feel like it's prioritizing your health. Yeah. And I think it's about prioritizing all parts of your health. Um, of course, I'm the hill, I'm back on my hill. Hello well also means being joyful and having pleasure and kind of having a holistic perspective. And I think that's kind of what pops up to me is like, yes, hello well all over. <laughs> Love it. And my next question to you is aisle or window? Window. What's always in your travel bag? Headphones, so I can listen to music. Headphones, headphones, headphones. I I have to have some kind of something happening, um, whether it's a podcast or it's usually music. Um, but definitely headphones um, and a travel candle. I like to travel candles. Love that. And when's the first time you knew that you were a person of color? Ooh, I was probably about three or four. And everyone got invited to, her name was Kim. I still remember her name, Kim. <laughs> Everybody got invited to Kim's birthday party except for me. And I spoke very well and could advocate for myself. And I told, I told my parents as soon as I got home, cause I just didn't understand. And my parents went right up to the school. <laughs> they were going up to the school parents if they needed to be. And, um, it turns out like, you know, the mom told Kim to invite everybody except for me because I was the black girl. I was the only black kid in the class in that particular class. So. That is something that I'm sure my parents were not ready to talk about because I was literally three or four. Um, but that is the first time I knew. Wow. Kim. Kim and her mom. Kim. I know. I wonder what Kim doing. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> mm, Kim, Kim, and Kim. <laughs> hope you turned out to be better than your mom. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yes. And my last question to you is, you know, part of this podcast is creating a wellness revolution for women of color to stop living in survival mode and actually thriving and putting themselves first. What advice would you give to your younger self to be a part of this movement? Mm. That you are enough. And it's okay to constantly be learning about yourself. Um, I think that that would be a, a big, big one. You're enough where you are today. Bet. I love it. Thank you so, so, so much for being on here, giving us information. 
We will definitely be getting that playlist information from you. So don't think you are getting out of these songs. <laughs> You're going to hook us up with our sexy, bringing our sexy back and making sure that we're adding not just sexual pleasure, but pleasure into our lives because what? You're all so worthy of it. Thank you all for another episode of the Hello Well with Danielle podcast. And I'll see you guys next week. Ciao. Thanks for joining us this week on the Hello Well with Danielle show. Make sure to visit our website, hellowellwithdanielle.com, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music and never miss an episode. Also, you can follow us on social media at Hello Well with Danielle on Facebook and Instagram and Hello Well Danny on Twitter. And if you like Hello 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 Love the show and got some good nuggets out of it, know that I'm not too proud to ask for you to please leave a rating or review on iTunes so that we can continue to expand our reach and help other women of color. Again, thanks so much for listening and I hope to see you next week. Ciao.